Hi, just a dumpster dive in follow-up. Uh, this Dell Optiplex 990, which I found in the uh, dumpster, it was uh, Dell's top of the line um, office uh, 900 series, uh, you know, slimline uh, PC, Intel Core i7 in here, and I had a quick look in a previous video where I scored two, which the other one was a HP one, which had an i5 uh, something or other in it with like a pass mark of like 7,000 or something like that. I'm currently actually using that. I put upgraded a graphics card in it and currently using that as my uh, main lab uh, capture, uh, video capture uh, PC here. So I thought I'd have a look at this one. And uh, one thing I didn't take a look at last time was the actual processor inside this thing. It turns out it's actually an i7. I, I won't show you the if you can't read that, sorry, but it's an i7-2600, uh, which has a pass mark rating of like um, 9,000 or something. It's like, oh, 8,000, sorry, um, 8,200 or something. It's pretty darn good. And I've also got this uh, motherboard up here as well, which has the exact same uh, socket 2011 i7-2600 processor in it. Um, as well as in the really kick-ass uh, case here. Look at all the drive bay, it's fantastic. But unfortunately, I think there's something wrong with that motherboard because it doesn't seem to power up. I've tried different power supplies and everything, and the power supplies hiccup, so I think it might have some sort of removed the CPU, removed everything. I, I think there's some sort of issue uh, with that. Anyway, I thought we'd uh, just take a look at that. Um, I've, uh, well, this one, I've opened up the uh, power supply, so let's take a squeeze at that. So the symptom with this uh, PC is that it just simply wouldn't uh, switch on. So, of course, you instantly uh, suspect the power supply. This is actually a Delta uh, power supply. You can see that in there. And, uh, you know, top quality uh, power supply looks, looks really well designed and uh, manufactured. Look at all the gunk in there for the stuff. And there's a fuse down in there. There it is. And... Uh, I've scraped away, um, it's all heat shrunk, which is fantastic, um, so I couldn't actually probe it unless I took the uh, board out, that's a bit much, so I just scraped away access to the top and bottom uh, terminals there, and we can get in there and measure that, because that's, well, the first port of core, really, but yeah, I like this supply, looks well designed, well manufactured, but you'd expect that in a top of the line Dell office PC. Okay, let's go in there, and... Ta-da! That is... Yep. It's blowing. There you go. But why is it so? I mean, is it was it just uh, some sort of power on uh, surge or something like that that caused, you know, fatigue in the fuse, caused an issue like that? That's possible. Or is there some, uh, you know, major fault somewhere that uh, blew the fuse? Only one way to find out. Replace it. Power it back up. If it blows again, you know there's something else. Wow, this is actually quite difficult to get out. You got some sponge under there. Look at that. Don't uh, like it's not really insulation, so I'm not sure what the deal is there. But uh, anyway, look at all this. It's just it's like this was all wired in place after the fact. And I don't think that's a connector in there. I think that's hard wired in. So that's a real pain in the ass to service. Jeez. Ugh. Looky what we have here. Look at that. That looks like it's had the snot blown out of it. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, there's your problem. Wow. Two capacitors. They're... Are they like high voltage ones? I don't know, but they've they're really gone to town. No wonder the fuse blew. So maybe I've done videos on this before. Ceramic capacitors can uh, fail short and cause a real problem, but I'm going to... Get, like clean that out, sort of scrape it out and suck those off. It's nothing like sucking off a dead capacitor. There we go, got them out. That doesn't look pretty, does it? Is there a trace running? I think there's a trace running under between them. That's interesting. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that these suckers have uh, overheated and uh, melted some, like most likely shorted out. Of course, the power delivers in there, they heat up, and it's melted some of that uh, foam underneath. Huh? Not a big fan of that foam. Now, we don't directly know what the voltage of uh, these caps are, but we can have a look at the placement here. And you can see this uh, trace going off here. They've got a like a star grounding point here going off. There's actually, uh, looks like two of those going off, those star grounding points to elsewhere way up in the circuit. And 
This one here, look at this, it looks like it's directly connected there. A bit hard to see on my camcorder screen, I'll confirm that by buzzing it out. Uh, but that looks like it's directly across a big filter cap on the top. Aha, is that the main DC filter cap? If so, that would explain why we blew the snot out of the uh, 1206 uh, ceramic capacitor there, because it would have been like a high voltage, like 400 volt cap, and any direct failure in that, bam, is directly across that rail. It's going to take out the uh, fuse, definitely. So, yep. And sure enough, yep, it's the main filter cap there. And yes, it's a uh, 150 mic, 420 volt job. So there you go. They would have been high voltage ceramic caps. I don't have in my uh, junk bin, I don't have... Uh, such high voltage uh, 1206 ceramic caps, but because it's basically just some, uh, you know, uh, higher frequency, lower impedance stuff across the main filter cap there, we can simply leave that out and it should still work. And as for the one next to it, well, follow the money. That goes up to there. What's that between there and there, perhaps? Ah, uh, no, you're probably screaming at me because you're watching in high def and I'm watching in the, on the camcorder screen. No, these two caps are in parallel and that's actually not connected to the main filter cap there. It's actually connected to there. So I need to follow the money and uh, see where that goes. Deep throat time. Just follow the money. Okay, so it looks like that buggers off under the hot snot down in there. Buggers off to that IC there, that pin over there. So I, look, I don't know. I'm not going to pull out a, try and reverse engineer it or pull out a uh, typical uh, schematic or whatnot. So yeah, I'll just um, choose, you know, the highest voltage cap I've got to hand and uh, whack it in there. And thanks to AVX who uh, sent in this kit among uh, many others. I've covered these in a previous mailbag with the uh, flexible uh, termination on these things. Automotive grade, fantastic. Um, let's just go for a uh, 10 nanofarad uh, 200 volt uh, 0805. 200 volt, that's I think more than overkill. But anyway, so we'll just solder a couple of those back on and uh, she'll be right. Well. Hopefully. Actually, I suspect that only one of these may have failed because I the other one, well, one of them there measures uh, 33N. There it is. Um, that one is still good. So, yeah, I suspect that, uh, well, our 10N is probably, that's all I've got in that uh, high voltage. I just want to use as high a voltage uh, one as possible. But I think, yeah, we've only got the one failure there and uh, the other one next to it is it's pretty much fine and dandy. There's just a recap of the uh, soft termination system there that uh, prevents PCB warping uh, from cracking the uh, ceramic cap. There it is, check it out, it's a proper ceramic job, uh, 6.3 amps. So yeah, um, we might be able to get those end caps off and uh, actually stick it back in, reuse those, can we? Hmm. Well, check it out, my junk bin came through. I just so happen to have exactly a 6.3 amp um, it's ceramic HRC fuse. <laughs> Beautiful. And better yet, those end caps come off. Fantastic. I'll stick them back on. I can solder this sucker back in. I can even put some heat shrink on it. Check it out. Like I bought one. All right. There's only one way to find out if this is any good. Let's plug it in. Uh, there's no power switch on this one. There's a green lead on the back. There's some sort of uh, reset overload. See if it goes bang. Oop. No green light. Oh. Wah, 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 wah. Now, I don't think it's actually worth pursuing that uh, power supply troubleshooting any further in terms of, uh, you know, an effort for value uh, output. But um, I'm curious to know if this motherboard actually works. So I think I might just whack on an external power supply onto it. Uh, we can just lift that out, slide out that access the power of course it's got uh it's it's basically a um standard size motherboard so we can if the motherboard works we might be able to transplant it into a different case but the dell ones if you want to get the exact dell replacement uh power supply it's pretty expensive like 70 80 bucks or something i'm not going to spend that on uh this machine but i could even transfer the motherboard out if it works into another case which i've got which supports the uh, same size motherboard or potentially maybe um, you know, hacking some other sort of uh, slimline power supply into 
under there, but it won't like go into the nice because it's got like a nice clip a railing system here that you push down on that and it slides out and all that sort of jazz. But you know, if we can just stick it in there or something, tie it down. How are you doing? Bit of hot snot? She'll be right. So I've got this other uh, dumpster PC. It's a compact uh, Presario. It's an i5 something. It's not uh, very powerful at all. Um, and let's power it up. Hey, CPU fans coming on. By the way, it only it, it was missing the uh, two pins down the bottom, down there on the uh, power connector. If you can uh, see that, but uh, no, it's it's powering up. Well, the fans coming on. It's a good sign. Power supply is not hiccuping. All right, let's give it a ball. Do I see something flicker? Dell! Ha <laughs> ha! There you go. Motherboard works fine. F12 thing. There we go. We're in like Flynn. There is it. Oh, we got eight gig of RAM. No workers. And there it is. The i7 2600 at 3.4 gig. Sweet as. Well, I don't really want to uh, transplant the motherboard out of this into the compact Presario case. I really don't like that case. It's like the tower cases are, yeah, I'm so over them. I really like these uh, slimline ones here, especially for in, in the lab. You know, slide them under the bench. You can put like trays and stuff, slide them under. Really, uh, they do work quite nice. Actually, I had another look on uh, eBay and it turns out that all the uh, cheap ones actually have the cable uh, coming out the side here. They have the fan on the end and the cable like coming out here somewhere and it's only like a really short power supply cable. So it's even though they advertise it as compatible with the Optiplex 990, which is what this one is, but this one needs this massive long power cable coming all the way over here, not to mention the uh, the super long um, extra 12 volt one going over here as well. And um, yeah, so unfortunately, this one seems to be a fair bit rarer and more expensive. Aha, I remembered I might actually have an old Dell down in the bunker, so I took a trip down, dug through the dumpster PC archives. Sure enough, um, we've got this um, Dell Studio, I don't know, something or other, whatever it is. Anyway, it's an Intel Core 2 Duo. Fantastic, it's an E7400. Uh, so, you know, not exactly great, but check out inside. That looks very similar. Power supply, not identical. It's the cable's not quite as long here. It just goes down into there, but maybe that will reach and that'll fit. We can bodge it in. Hmm, let's give it a go. Studio Slim 540S for those playing along at home. Well, check it out. They're near identical. The only major difference is the one that uh, came out actually um, has the cable coming out the bottom here. And there we go. There it is again, the D250 something or other. And this is the one we got inside the old uh, Slim one. And, well, it's even got the like the correct indents. It should just uh, clip in. Beauty. Let's give it a go. Ha! <laughs> it clips in. <laughs> it's not as solid as the other one, but put the screws in the back. She'll be right. No worries. Um, that won't be able to snake right around there like it did last time, but no wackers. I can take that over the top there. She'll be right. No worries whatsoever. Ah, oh, it's a Bobby Dazzler. Look at that. And power cable reaches. That is a winner winner chicken dinner. Ha! <laughs> Even the three screw holes line up. <laughs> Sometimes you'll win. Beautiful. All right, here she goes. <laughs> yeah, come on. Beautiful. There you go. We have a working Core i7 2600 machine in a, a nice Optiplex 990 uh, case. Of course, I'm going to have to get a uh, GT 1030 uh, graphics card for it, one of those uh, slim, uh, low-profile things, but that, and this fan is pretty silent on that uh, power supply and that as well, so that's fantastic. By the way, I'm not sure if I uh, ever updated you on uh, this uh, previous one that I found in the dumpster. It's a Core i7-3770S. It's actually 
I believe it's the most powerful one I've ever uh, found in the dumpster. Slightly better than the um, i5 I'm currently running as my uh, lab PC. I think it's a pass mark of like 8800 or 9000 or, or something like that. There we go for those playing along at home. Um, and it works a treat. Um, it had like a fan issues, but I reset the bias and did uh, all sorts of stuff. And it is a very, very nice machine. And it's... um. And the fans go, like, they a bit noisy when they start up uh, for 10 seconds, but then they uh, shut down. Damn thing's near silent, a 3770S. So I now have three working dumpster slimline machines. One, an i5, which I'm using as a lab PC, and all of them are, like, over 8,000 uh, pass mark, and a 3770. Um, just unbelievable what people are throwing out. And as it so happens, it was real handy to keep that uh, old Core 2 Duo Dell machine as well. I got the perfect power supply out of it. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Sometimes you just win. Like, if you bought that, I could sell these on eBay for, I don't know, probably $250, $300 each, um, Australian, something like that. And they just toss them out. But wait, that's not all. I didn't want to do this as a separate video. It wasn't really worthy, but let's check out this uh, BenQ or Bink uh, monitor. It's a GL2450. It's a 24 inch uh, full HD monitor with all the bells, you know, one of those uh, new fangled lead backlight ones. Um, what a score to go along with the uh, things. And it seems to be working just fine. I've only, it looks a bit fuzzy at the moment. I'm using uh, VGA output at the moment, but uh, it looks to be in pretty good nick. It's a bit dusty, but it even comes with... Uh, still got the sticker on the back. <laughs> Beautiful. So there's some pretty amazing finds from the uh, dumpster in recent times. Three working i7 machines, uh, monitors. This is not... I think I got another monitor fairly uh, recently, and like some of them are crap, but occasionally you get like decent ones, like a 24 inch um, LED backlight one like this model here. Unbelievable. And for those who uh, always ask, yes, I do find this stuff in the dumpster. It is a corporate office complex. You have to be an owner. It serves several big corporate uh, office buildings here. There's dozens and dozens of uh, high tech companies here, and they just throw out, you know, office uh, PCs like this or a dime a dozen to them and monitors when they upgrade and other uh, sorts of stuff. And they just toss them out, usually, almost always, uh, working in some sort of condition. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so, yes, this is not a public access dumpster. It's uh, specifically for the use of um, the companies in this uh, corporate business park. And sorry if uh, these machines are better than the one that you're using now, because I know there's a lot of people who are absolutely amazed by this, and they go, well, I wish I could have a 3770, you know, with an eight or 9,000 pass mark or something like that. And, well, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's just the culture we live in. They throw this stuff away. Unbelievable. Anyway, if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up, and as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time. Hello.